Welcome to Human Resources for Small Business, where we discuss HR best practice, hot topics in HR, HR strategy, and employment law changes that affect business. I'm your host, Brandon Laws of Zenium HR. Our website is www.zeniumhr.com, where you can follow us, read articles, watch videos, or contact us. Thank you for listening. Today is May 20th, and my guest today is Lacey Halpern of Zenium HR. Lacey is a human resource account representative, has six years of experience in working with small and medium-sized companies with HR consulting and working with handbooks, which is our topic for today. Lacey, why would a small and medium-sized company need a handbook in the first place? I think it's important for a company to have a handbook because oftentimes when a new employee onboards into your organization, it's really your first opportunity to show them who you are as a company. It sets the tone for the expectations that should be outlined for this new employee. And really, it gives an organization the ability to hold folks accountable. And that's what really most companies use handbooks for, to hold people accountable, to be consistent, and to set forth the expectations for new employees. Do you think there's a specific size of a company that really needs to get a handbook in place? In my experience, I've seen even small companies with two employees have issues with employees not performing, people not following the policies. And so in those instances, those companies that chose not to have handbooks because they were small oftentimes went back and said, I wish we would have had this written out. So it almost seems like it's after the fact that something happens and then a a business owner realizes, okay, I'm exposed to a lot of different, um, I guess, issues that could arise. Mm -hmm. So then it's almost kind of a reactive Mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah, sometimes I think companies decide that it's important to have a handbook because they're in a situation where they're wanting to hold someone accountable for performance, for not following a policy or a procedure. It's not written out, and they don't have something to go back on to say, you acknowledged receiving this information and chose not to follow these policies. So in those instances, those companies come back and say, let's get this on paper so that the next time it comes up, we've got something to show that we were trying to hold people accountable by setting these rules out. So in today's day and age, it seems like there's a lot of changes with state and federal regulations. It it almost seems like it's changing dramatically, but as a business owner, how often should you be updating the handbook? We typically recommend that every few years a company look at their handbook and say, what legal things in the state that we're in have changed? what things are important for us to communicate to our employees. So I would say every two to three years, it's good to look at that. And then on the other side, what's important for your company policies? So things that are specific to your organization. And some organizations are in rapid growth mode stages. So in those instances, looking at the policies more frequently might make more sense. It's just important that when those changes are made, those changes are communicated to employees in a timely manner. Now, with something that changes instantly, such as a a federal regulation that just got passed, do you recommend somebody internally keeps up on those changes, that way they could suggest a change to their handbook immediately, or or should they look out out to like an employment law attorney for something like that? I think it's really difficult, even for people that are pretty tenured in HR, to stay on top of things. So oftentimes companies will have Um, relationships with employment firms, so attorneys, lawyers that are pretty well versed that keep them up to date. Sometimes companies choose to outsource their HR to companies like Zenium, where we're the ones that are the ones that are responsible for really staying up to date on those laws. So it's really up to the company to decide really how they want to handle that, but it's true that keeping up on all of those legal updates, it's difficult. Now on the technical aspects of the handbook, how would you actually organize it? Would you start off with maybe a a letter from the owner, or how how, how would you start that? We see companies do it all different sorts of ways. I think it's great, in my opinion, to have a message from someone that's of importance in the company, so whether that's your owner, the president, CEO, whoever that is that really has a voice and presence in front of the employees, a message to them to set the tone for what the company is all about, pieces about values, mission, um, Really things that set the tone for the culture are also important to include in a handbook, and we see those often in the front. 
Other things that are important to include would be benefits. So we typically see these in the front of handbooks more recently because you're wanting to set the tone for employees about what they're getting by joining this company and becoming part of this team. And more often, the legal language, so leaves of absence, harassment, those types of policies are included towards the back of the handbook. And then there's always a receipt page that we recommend including so that employees are signing off acknowledging that they've received the handbook, they're going to read it and abide by the rules. And then that's kept in the employee's personnel file. So it really sounds like the handbook not only should be policy driven, but it should be very cultural and it should be unique to that particular company. Definitely. So it sounds like you have a ton of experience in customizing handbooks. Would you say a fair amount of time goes into actually customizing the cultural part of it? Mm -hmm, uh, definitely. It, and so in working with a small and medium sized company, you'd probably work with the owner mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, um, oftentimes in a small medium sized company, we're working with the owner or some sort of leadership team that's really working to make sure that that language sounds like it's coming from their voice. So certainly there's legal language um, that you can find on the internet that's got information about leaves of absence and what employees are protected, types of protected classes, those sorts of things. But really what's important is that the voice of the handbook comes from the company. Because one company is not the same as another. And it's your, like I said, opportunity to really show your new employees and your current staff if it's the first time you're rolling out a handbook the tone of the company and, and what we're going to be like moving forward. So I think you earlier you mentioned that a company should be looking at up, making updates about two to three years, every two to three years. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that a company should actually update it more often to just stay ahead of the curve? or? I think that there are some companies that choose to do that, especially if it's something that's really important. So there were recently in the last few years there have been updates to family medical leave protections for employees and, and what that means for them. Those are important things for employees to know about. So whether or not you're communicating that in a handbook policy, and maybe you're revising the whole handbook because there are other policies that need to be updated. Sometimes a whole handbook revision and a rollout to employees is a good idea. If it's just one or two little things, we often see companies doing addendums. And what that typically looks like is the new policy is printed out, provided to employees. It's communicated what the changes are and employees are acknowledging receiving those revisions. And so typically with the, I guess with the addendum, you're definitely getting employee signatures, especially when they're policy driven. Yes. But what about like in a new hire orientation when the handbook is first being rolled out to a new employee, do they sign something to acknowledge receipt as well? Yes, we recommend that they do. And like I said before, this is really your opportunity to set expectations and to set goals for employees. and. In that new hire orientation, the handbook is the way to outline to your employees what we're all about, the benefits that we have to offer, and these are the rules, and this is what our company is going to hold you accountable to. And the best way to acknowledge that an employee has received it and they're going to abide by it is to having a receipt page that's either torn out or set separate from that handbook that they sign, date, and then it's kept in the personnel file. I imagine there's a part of the handbook is very cultural oriented, and then the other part is very kind of legalese. Mm -hmm. Who really gets a chance to take a stab at writing this? Is it a legal professional? Is it the owner? Does an owner get a chance to write the entire thing? Or how do, what do you usually see? With the clients that Zenium has, really it's very a collaborative effort. So oftentimes Zenium is going out and meeting with companies and working through the types of policies that they have, their specific benefit packages, the types of rules that they have, certain safety practices, all of those things that the company really needs to set specific guidelines for, that's all part of an intake at Zenium. And then what happens is, is a draft is created that includes policies that we've worked on and had legal review of over the years. That draft is then provided to the business owner, the president, the HR professional in that organization. And oftentimes there's a lot of back and forth. So everyone that the organization wants to have input in, they all have the opportunity to do so. So let's say that you have a handbook but something happens that isn't in the handbook, mm -hmm. in which I'm sure you've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what would happen at that point? Most often we recommend that the company look at past precedent. So what have we done before in this type of situation? How have we handled it? And if it's something that's never come up, this is now the opportunity for the company to set precedent. So if this were to happen again, how would we want our managers and supervisors to handle these situations? 
If it's not in a policy, it's difficult to hold folks accountable. If they haven't been communicated that they're not allowed to perform these certain actions in the workplace, it's difficult to say, we expected you not to do this. So what we recommend is that if those instances come up where you wished you had a policy, it would have made the situation much easier to handle, that's the time to either make a revision to your handbook, if it's time to look at that, or to cre create those addendums and really have the employees have the opportunity to see them and acknowledge receiving them. So Lacey, what would you say to a business owner that feels that there's a lot more risk in having a handbook as compared to not having one? I think that that's the buzz that's going around right now. So small, medium-sized companies say, I've never had one before, and I've heard that it's way more risky to have a handbook in place. What I would say is that it's very difficult to hold people accountable to policies that are just kind of out there and most employees know that they're supposed to follow them, but when they're not written down, it's very difficult to hold them accountable and then move forward through progressive discipline if that's what your company wants to do, if it's warranted. So for instance, if an employee breaks a policy that most people in the company assume is something that's pretty common sense and the employee says, at the last company I worked at, it wasn't a problem. We were always allowed to play on the internet on Facebook, and you don't have a policy about that. It's difficult to hold those people accountable, especially if it's something that hasn't been held accountable before. There's maybe been instances where other people have been allowed grace and they haven't been written up or suspended or any of the steps in your progressive discipline policy. I think best practice is to have policies, have procedures, even for small companies, small handbooks work. Something that's communicated to employees so they know what you're about and what their expectations are. So on the other side of that, let's say I'm a business owner with a few employees, don't have a handbook in place, mm -hmm. starting from scratch really. Mm -hmm. What sort of things do I need in it? I know you touched on a little, little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. What sort of things absolutely need to go in it? I think things that are really important is your culture. So something that speaks about who you are, what you do, how long you've been in business, your values, um, your mission, those sorts of things at the beginning of the handbook are really important. Benefits, great opportunity for you to share with the new employees and your current employees all the great things that you offer and why they should stay with your organization. It helps with retention by outlining those benefits. Work rules, expectations, especially things that you've seen over the years are problems that come up quite a bit that you want to be able to fall back on a policy. Attendance is a perfect example. A lot of companies struggle with people showing up on time and being reliable. Having an attendance policy outlined in your work rules section is really helpful to hold people accountable. And then I would also say if there are protections that employees are allowed under the law based on your company size, like for instance Oregon Family Medical Leave, domestic violence leave, harassment, ADA protections, all those sorts of things are really important to include in the handbook. It shows the state and governmental agencies that you're in compliance and that you are a well-intentioned employer. And then a receipt page, like we've talked about, acknowledging that they've received it. So what do you see employers actually adding to the handbook right now? What, what's really hot right now? What's hot is social media um, and bullying. So we're noticing that employers that have had Policies about computer use, internet use, are really beefing those policies up and including details about social media, what they're allowed to do on their personal time that might pertain to client information, customer information, just general company information, and then what are employees allowed to do in their jobs when their jobs interact with social media. So people in marketing positions are on social media sites. What are they allowed to do in the workplace? And then the other policy that we're seeing companies add is policies about bullying. So most organizations that have had handbooks in place that have been reviewed by legal oftentimes have harassment policies, anti-harassment policies in their handbooks that outline the certain protections that folks have based on protected classes and that companies will not tolerate harassment. Well, something that's been coming up and we've seen it in the media, we've seen it in schools, is bullying. So just not being very nice at work. So companies are outlining, most recently, policies about zero tolerance for bullying in the workplace. Those two are probably the hottest new topics that we've seen added most recently. So if HR people or business owners are really looking to get started or make some updates, what, what should they do? What next steps should they really take? I would sit down with the leadership team at the company and really look at 
what has happened recently where we've wished that we had a policy? So what types of instances, employee relations issues have come up where it would have been helpful to have a policy? Look at your employee size and really find out where do we fall within the law? What protections do our employees have under the law in Oregon and federally? And then I would work with either an attorney, an HR professional, or an outsourced firm like Xenium to make sure that not only does the handbook speak of the company and what you're all about, but that it's also something that could stand up if you really needed to hold an employee accountable. Our guest today has been Lacey Halpern. Thanks for being part of our show. You're welcome. This podcast is produced by Xenium Resources, Inc., all rights reserved. For information on guests or for interview requests, please visit www.zeniumhr.com or email info at zeniumhr.com. Everything on this show should be considered educational and informational only and not personal advice. Please consult with the appropriate tax, legal, or business professional for individualized advice.